Back home now, and a proposed ban on self-managed superannuation funds investing in collectibles has the art industry up in arms. The recommendation is the latest to come out of the Cooper Review into superannuation. The industry claims that the move could cost it $100 million a year. So to discuss that, Tom Lowenstein joins you now. He's the Director of Lowenstein Arts Management and is in the studio. Tom Lowenstein, good morning. Thanks for good joining morning. us. Indeed, there's going to be a campaign on this launched in Melbourne today uh, against this review. Tell us uh, what your issue is with the Cooper Review ruling out uh, art being used in self-managed super <coughs> funds. I think the main uh, problem that we see is that the damage that this would cause by removing something like $100 million dollars out of a pool of funds that is being used to acquire art, all of a sudden being stopped from being used to acquire art. There's funds in superannuation funds, the self-managed funds, and they are basically going to be told that you cannot invest in art. Mm -hmm. Now this would have, if you imagine somewhere in the vicinity of 15 to 20 percent of sales are represented by that hundred million dollars. So there would be a decrease in the amount of art sold throughout Australia by somewhere in the vicinity of 15 to 20 per cent. Why, why should art be considered as an investment tool for super? Surely it's uh, something that people gain great enjoyment from, uh, from a personal use aspect, like they do fine wines. Why should it be treated the same way as, say, share portfolios do for super purposes? Well, first of all, I think uh, the arts industry has stopped being regarded as uh, a collectible. Art is no longer the same as being just a collectible. I think art has become an industry. It is something that has appreciated in value over the period. And in many instances, you have got people who, when they know what they're doing and they invest in art, they've done extremely well. In fact, much better than, than in shares. But that's the key issue, isn't it? When they know what they're doing. Now, unlike any other investment for superannuation purposes that can have some regulation around it and be prudentially regulated unless you absolutely know what you're doing and, and even in, in that case when it comes to art you might not necessarily get the long-term benefit you could be buying stuff for your for your superannuation portfolio that in the end is worthless. Now I think if you look at the uh, requirements by the tax office as to what is regarded as being a proper prudent investment there's been a ruling that's been issued back uh, about two years ago which sets out the basis on which the tax department accepts that art is a proper form of investment. Does it need to be of a, of, of a certain level, by a certain kind of established artist, no, of a certain I value? Think, I think what is required is that uh, there is an investment strategy, that there is uh, a uh, proper advice being sought in relation to the acquisition of the art. But do, do a lot of people get advice? If you're considering going to the share market, there are financial planners, there are stockbrokers who mm. can guide investors through the often treacherous paths of the stock exchange. What, uh, what help, uh, if any, do art investors have? I think in many instances, if, if somebody has a self-managed super superannuation fund investing in art, those people will be uh, getting proper advice. I have bought art in my super fund and I have always sought advice, even though I happen to be involved in the arts industry. I believe that this is one of the fundamentals of any type of investment. And I mean, you have in the share market also people who will listen to taxi drivers as to what tips, uh, what shares they should be well, buying. That, that, that so is very I, true. Yeah. <laughs> and they're not prevented from buying shares. Look, uh, Tom Lewisine, just finally, how confident are you that with the launch of this campaign against the findings of the Cooper Review that you can actually turn the government's mind around? You feeling confident about that? Well, I think I am. Last night I was listening to uh, Minister Garrett uh, talking on... Uh, uh, ABC National. Radio National, Ra yes. Radio National. And I think he made a commitment to the arts. And I'd very much like him to actually come out and sort of say, yes, I'm committed not to introduce these recommendations if they are proven to be uh, detrimental to the arts industry. Because people are already ringing me and I have had uh, a number of calls from people who are saying we are already suffering now because people are cancelling mm. Uh, artworks that they've wanted to acquire 
because they, there's this uncertainty as to what is happening as a result of the Cooper report. All right, well, we'll see what comes of the campaign. Good to see you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.